Greetings and welcome. Uh, in today's video, we're going to talk about the complex plane and the polar form of a complex number. Uh, so the complex plane is actually, if I wanted to graph a number, uh, an imaginary number, or complex number, such as uh, 2 plus i, I could graph that um, in the complex plane in which the formerly known as the x-axis is now the real axis and the formerly known as the y-axis is now the imaginary axis. So the point 2 plus i would be over 2 on the real axis and up 1 on the imaginary axis, and this would be the point 2 plus i. Um, similarly, I could graph other points like uh, negative 3, uh, no commas there, sorry, uh, minus 5i would be back 1, 2, 3, and then down 5 in the imaginary direction, and there would be negative 3 minus 5i. So these are um, points graphed on the complex plane, and with these points I can also uh, do some work where I could find the absolute value of a complex number. And the absolute value, think about, uh, let's first of all recall absolute value in the first place. Right? So absolute value uh, is defined as the distance a point is from zero, right? Or a distance a number is from zero. And similarly, uh, in these cases, if I wanted to find um, the absolute value of 2 plus i, I want to figure out how far is this from zero. So let's look at this picture here. Uh, graphically speaking, this distance from zero is this diagonal line, and I'd actually have to kind of solve this right triangle. So the distance it is from zero is going to actually just be uh, using, solved using Pythagorean theorem. So the absolute value is the Pythagorean theorem, uh, so it'll just be the square root of uh, 2 squared plus 1 squared, and that 2 and 1, uh, 2 is the value of a, and uh, b was 1, right, because uh, these are of the form a plus bi is kind of the form of a complex number, or rectangular form specifically. Uh, so uh, a was the overness of it, and b was the rise of the point. Um, so to find the absolute value, I just kind of plug those numbers in and do some little work here. So this would be the square root of 2 squared is 4, 1 squared is 1, so square root of 5 would be the absolute value of that point. Um, and the absolute value of negative 3 minus 5i uh, would just equal the square root of negative 3 all squared uh, plus negative 5 all squared. So that would be the square root of, uh, that was an ugly square root, <coughs> uh, three, negative 3 all squared is positive 9, negative 5 uh, squared is positive 25, so that's the square root of, what's that, 34, and that does not reduce. So that would be the absolute value of this complex number. Uh, so the absolute value of a complex number, um, I'll define it for us. If uh, z is equal to a plus bi, then the absolute value of z is equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared, right? Um, and that's the definition. Now, uh, the absolute value of a complex number is also uh, referred to as the modulus, um, m-o-d-u-l-u-s modulus. Uh, so that's another name that might be given for it. Um, now, uh, so this is rectangular form on the coordinate plane or complex plane. It turns out there's also polar form or trigonometric form is another name for it. And 
since every point in the rectangular plane can be represented as well in terms of an r and a theta, <coughs> it turns out that similarly it can be done in uh, the complex plane, that I can represent those as polar uh, points as well. So imagine uh, that I've got my point. So here's uh, A plus BI graphed out. Um, and the R value is just going to be the absolute value of the complex number. Right, and here would be my theta, the angle, right? This would be a right triangle. A would be here, B would be there. And um, so R is just going to be the absolute value, and theta is called the amplitude. Let's see, so let's actually write that down. So R is going to be the absolute value of A plus BI, or the square root of A squared plus B squared. And uh, theta is also referred to as, um, so let's see, well, actually I'll write it this way. So R is sometimes referred to as the modulus. Um, theta is referred to as the amplitude. Uh, or sometimes the argument. All right. An argument is actually, uh, I, I always think of programming when I hear that phrase. That's kind of an input value into a function. Uh, so theta is going to equal um, just whatever angle this happens to be. And uh, I think in previous sections, when we were talking about finding theta, uh, when we knew um, the rectangular form of a point, uh, it was the arctan or tan inverse. Uh, so that still works. Uh, and in this case, it would be uh, rise over 1 or b over a. And then sometimes, uh, depending on if x is positive, uh, it would just be this. If x is negative, you would have to add pi to it. Basically taking into account which quadrant you're in and whether the tan inverse is going to be giving you a reference angle or not. Um, another way uh, you could write this, which I kind of like better, um, I could say that tan of theta uh, is equal to b over a. And I kind of like that representation of it a little bit better. Um, because then uh, it's kind of up to the students to figure out which what the value of theta is and you could tell like oh if b is negative um, and a is positive uh, then it must have been in the fourth quadrant right and you could kinda tell as you plug those things in and do your regular old reference angle work so um, so let's figure out what a uh, polar form of this point would be uh, so if z is equal to a plus bi It turns out uh, that A, uh, the horizontal component, is going to be R times uh, cos theta, once again, and B, the vertical component, just like Y in our previous uh, work with polar coordinates, will be R times sine theta. So I'll be able to simply substitute in for A and B. So I'll get z is equal to r cos theta uh, plus b is r sine theta times i. And then typically what we'll do is factor out the r value here since it's common between those two. And we'll get z is equal to r parentheses cos theta uh, plus sine theta i or I sine theta, actually. Um, <coughs> and uh, so when you have a point in this form, uh, you can determine the R value is the distance out that it is, and theta would be um, the angle or amplitude that the point is at as well. Um, so this is referred to as uh, polar form of a complex number. Uh, it's also sometimes referred to as trigonometric form.
And then there's kind of a nice shorthand they uh, mathematicians have created for it. Uh, sometimes they'll also write it as R times C I S theta. Uh, so that's R cosine I times sine the theta. Uh, so that's very much shorthand, um, but I, th I think it's kind of cute. Um, so that's another way you could write it uh, in order to do that. So let's actually do some examples with this. Uh, and our classic, of course, is what's the point of another universe or representation of a point if you can't convert from one universe to the other? So uh, let's express in polar form. Uh, so suppose I've got the point uh, negative 3 plus 4i. Um, so just might as well define what we've got here. So a is negative 3, b is 4. Let's see. And uh, so what I'm going to do is first I've got to figure out what um, r and theta are. So r is going to be the absolute value of this or Pythagorean theorem with uh, a and b plugged in, right? So negative 3 squared plus 4 squared. Um, I think this is going to be a classic right here. Square root of 25, which is 5. So my modulus is 5. And then to find theta, uh, well, we know that tan theta will equal b over a, 4 over negative 3. Now think about what quadrant we're in. Um, negative 3, 4 would be left 3, up 4, so this is quadrant 2. Um, so tangent, let's see, oh wow, I haven't thought about this for a while. Let's see, uh, sine and cosine are positive, positive. Uh, cosine is negative, sine is positive. And so tangent would also be negative in this quadrant. Um, so let's see, so to find theta, uh, that would be the tan inverse of uh, negative four-thirds, so theta is approximately, and let me just make sure I'm in radians, yep, um, tan inverse of negative four-thirds, and I get negative uh, 0 0.9273 radians, um, however that is uh, Kind of referring to this direction, so in order to get the right angle, I'll have to add pi to this uh, in order to get it to be in the correct quadrant. So uh, I will add pi. Um, so theta is approximately, and when I add pi, I get uh, 2.214, uh, I guess I'll go out to three decimal places, three uh, radians. Um, so there is my amplitude or argument, um, and there was my modulus. So this point uh, represented this way. Um, I'm going to plug r and theta into these, right? So I'm going to have uh, my point. If I gave it a name, I could have, but I didn't. Uh, so I could call it z if I wanted to. But it will be uh, 5 parentheses cosine of 2.2143. Uh, plus i sine of 2.2143. Or I can write the nice shorthand notation um, of 5 times cis of 2.2143 uh, is another way I could represent that. So this is a polar form or trigonometric form of this complex number. <coughs> and uh, yeah, so I think these kind of work quite nicely. Um, let's do one actually where we end up having to graph it. Uh, so we'll do one more example, and I think we'll call it a video. Let's see. So suppose I have to graph uh, the following. What if I've got 4 uh, times cosine of 11 pi over 6 plus i sine 11 pi over 6. So uh, let's just gather the information from this first of all. So our modulus is 4 and our amplitude is 11 pi over 6. Um, 
and then uh, sort of graph this. <coughs> Uh, so here is my, let's see, my real axis, and then my imaginary, so to speak. But since I'm graphing this uh, in the terms of a polar, what I'm going to do is first figure out, all right, my angle is 11 pi over 6, so that is something like this, uh, is 11 pi over 6, right, so it's in this quadrant. Uh, same as like a negative 30 degree angle or a negative pi over 6 angle, right? And I'm going to go out four units. Um, so let's say that this is the point right there. Uh, so this is the point four uh, times CIS 11 pi over six. Uh, so there's that point represented in polar form. Um, so not too shabby. And uh, we just go out that R value. Let's see, I minus one, one, two, three, four. So you can kind of see that on that arc, it would land there. Um, and yeah, so there, it's kind of not that bad. Uh, and this is just another way of representing um, imaginary or complex numbers. And it turns out, yes, we can graph them. And not only can we graph them in rectangular form, but also in polar form. Um, yeah, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.